Chapter 15, Abaguchi. Wally felt sick. He left the dinner table and went upstairs to his room, lying across his bed on his stomach, listening to the wail of the siren in the distance. Girl found dead in cellar of bookstore. He could see the headlines. Even now, girl trapped in cellar suffocates. The possibilities were unlimited. Boy charged with murder. Boy's pranks cost girl's life. Hatford boy gets life sentence. Wally moaned. The noise of the police siren stopped. Now they were discovering the body. Now they were loading it into an ambulance. Now they were unclenching the fingers of the dead girl. And there was a folded piece of paper with only three words. Wally did it. <laughs> Jake and Josh came upstairs next and sat down silently on the edge of Wally's bed. You know what happened, I'll bet, said Jake. Somebody saw her trying to get out of Odeker's and thought she was trying to rob it and shot her. Hush, said Wally. Just hush. Peter appeared in the doorway. Maybe the Abaguchi got her, he said. Listen, that siren might not have anything to do with Caroline at all. She probably crawled out and left as soon as we went home, said Josh. Then why did Eddie call here and wondered if we'd seen her? Oh, right. Maybe the Abaguchi ate her up, said Peter. Hush, Wally said again. If you guys can't say anything helpful, don't say anything at all. Mother's voice sounded below in the hallway. Are you boys all through eating? I mean, isn't anyone hungry tonight? I'm all done, Mom, Wally called. Me too, said Josh and Jake. I'm having dessert, Peter announced. And he went back downstairs. We could be in big, big trouble, said Wally. Maybe we ought to walk over to the police station and turn ourselves in, said Josh. The boys looked at each other. Somehow it seemed the only sensible thing to do. Just explain exactly what had happened before the sheriff came looking. <clears throat> they went downstairs. We're going to walk into town and see what's happening, Mom, said Jake. Now, don't you boys get to fooling around and waste the whole evening, she said. I want your homework done before 9 o'clock. Be right back, Jake told her. Wally said nothing. He was thinking how their last words to her would be. Be right back. And 20 years later, they'd get out of prison. <laughs> They put on their jackets and went outside, where the wind was even colder than they had remembered. As they walked toward the business district, they could see the light of the police cruiser going around and around. Wally kept listening for the sound of an ambulance. The sound of an ambulance would mean that Caroline was still alive and they were rushing her to a hospital. No ambulance meant that she was dead when they found her, and they were just waiting for the coroner to get there. Why did the Malloys have to move to Buckman anyway? Life was so easy and simple before they came. He had to get this over with, had to know if she was dead or alive. He found himself half running as they reached Main Street and ran up the sidewalk to Oldeker's, where a small crowd had gathered. People seemed to be going in and out, so the boys went inside and threw the store to the back. There stood their father beside the police chief, a reporter, the older Mr. Oldeker, and several others. What happened? Wally skidded to a stop. Can't quite say, the police chief told him. Burglar alarm went off here at Odeker's, but there doesn't seem to be anything missing. Wally went limp. Nobody was hurt? No, why would there be, the police chief said. I think the burglar was frightened off by the alarm, said Mr. Odeker. I figured nobody would break in the front door because they'd have to break the glass, so I put the burglar alarm on the back, and when it goes off, you know it. And you're sure nothing is missing, the police chief asked? Not unless it was a book or two. We empty the cash register every night. Typewriter's still there. The adding machine. What else would a burglar want? The reporter, however, was bending over the back door. He was scraping his ballpoint pen along the edge of the doorway. Look here, the chief said. What have you got? Mr. Hatford and the police chief stooped down to see Wally to see. Wally edged closer to his father. The reporter was holding a tuft of light brown fur between his thumb and forefinger. When the newspaper came out the next day, there was a story on page one. An apparent burglary was attempted and failed last night at Odeker's bookstore on Main when the alarm went off as the back door was opened. No items were reported missing, but there was no explanation for a tuft of brown fur that seemed to have been caught as the door was closing. Mr. Hatford grinned a little when he read the story aloud at breakfast. The Abaguchi has been carrying off cats now, 
and is devouring books, perhaps, he said.